Hey, it's Aaron, the Metal Theologian. I'm still kind of messing with my setup a little bit today, too. Like, I'm moving this a little closer because I'm still sitting low, so bear with me if it's a little weird. But, um, yeah, so I'm still on the stone rod kick, right? That's funny because I hate that term. I'm like, you know, when I'm talking about metal, it's like it's metal, right? When I'm talking about jazz, it's jazz. But, like, there's this style of music that I've been spending a lot of time listening to, and it's like the shit that I've been most into has kind of straddled, like, the stoner rock and space rock and sort of psychedelic rock and like hard rock and metal to a certain degree too, right? And, um, you know, and I think it's its own thing too. I mean, I'm not into this whole like, oh, well, it's this meets this. It's not about that. The point is just that like, the name Stoner Rock sucks, right? It just sounds like shit. Desert Rock sounds pretty good. Maybe I'll start saying that, but I don't know if some of this shit is really Desert Rock, so I don't know it well enough, you know? You know, I was thinking before, um, I started, I was like, fuck, man, I have all these stoner rock records I don't even know what I'm going to talk about, right? I don't know if I have anything to say about this shit. Because, like, with metal shit, I know what I'm talking about, you know? And with jazz, you know, I've got a solid 15 years of collecting jazz under my belt, so. But, but with this shit, man, it's just, like, so. But I, but, I th- but I was thinking maybe, like, if I talk about like, sort of specific things I've noticed in the music. Like, specific things that appeal to me. Because I can talk about the sound overall being cool. But, like, some, like, thought about, like, how I'm listening to it. Sort of approaching a new genre. New to me. Um, after a lot of years of collecting. I don't know. Maybe that's interesting, too. So. You know, like, this one's definitely kind of on the metal side. This is a band called Conclave. I mean, easy cover pick. Even though I realized it was probably going to be kind of on the metal end of, edge of, end of the spectrum based on that, right? Gotta need a better trim than stoner rock. I hate that, you know what I mean? Because that's what I want to lump all this shit into. And space rock, I immediately think Hawkwind, you know? And, I mean, this isn't really very spacey anyway, but, you know, some of these bands you can hear the Hawkwind influence, but no more than anything else, you know? Anyway, this guy's like, has a really weird sort of shouty kind of voice. Like, it's funny because the style of singing that I normally really don't like, like, uh, when I think of like a pugnacious, like, I mean, I always call like, you know, Phil Anselmo or Pantera, uh, you know, the non-glam shit, like jock metal, right? Because it sounds like someone who wants to fucking fight you, you know what I mean? It sounds like the people who used to, like, try to start shit with me in high school because I liked metal, so... Why am I gonna fucking celebrate them as my heroes now, like, you know? Not that I carry beef around with me from high school and shit, but it's like, it's not really ground I'm willing to seed either, you know? But anyway, this guy sounds great! <laughs> oh, this is probably what you're saying. Although, actually, there's one thing that I thought was funny. The little things I noticed, right? And that's the beginning of this fucking thing. It sounded really familiar when I fired it up to play one more time before I started filming. It's this fucking intro right here. Doesn't that sound like Burial by Septic Death? Yeah, it doesn't sound like I'm the only one with a copy of Now That I Have the Attention, what do I do with it in my collection, their collection, you know what I'm saying? Like, little things like that totally kind of make my day, too. You know, it's funny because some of these I check out and they'll be, like, a little bit more proggy that I want or a little bit um, more of something. But, you know, that's all sort of helping me, like, refine my own um, taste, you know? And there's some uh, shit that... uh, You know some. I would just play this one single record. Um, here's another little interesting thing that I noticed, okay? Because this fucking band, I'm kind of fascinated by them. Now, this is not my favorite record out of all this sort of shit that, uh, that I've checked out lately. But this band called, I don't know, Monus Killed, I think? Oh, shit, man. I'm having trouble with the sitting arrangements here, so bear with me, like I said. Yeah, I think these guys are Danish, but they might be. Oh, no, yeah, no, it says uh, Svensk Psych on the back, so apparently it's Swedish. Yeah, anyway, I swear to God, these guys are like the space rock. They're kind of on the proggy end of the spectrum, like a little bit, like more than like, you know, I don't know, I have two albums by Yuri Gagarin, and one of them is more proggy, and one of them is uh, more spacey, and the other is more proggy. And um, the green one (laughs) is a lot more, that's more proggy. That's this one, is the one that uh, Monus Killed reminds me more of. Okay, but here's the thing. Here's the catch. These guys have a fucking Stooges vibe that is fucking nuts. 
and I can't completely figure out what it is because part of it is definitely the singer, okay, who who reminds me on every song, he reminds me of Iggy Pop on 1970, okay, specifically that song. But there's also something about the riffing and sort of the way the way they create the space inside of the riff that just reminds me of uh, like this. This totally sounds like the Stooges to me. But this band doesn't actually sound like the Stooges, like if you check boxes, right? It doesn't have like the guitar distortion. It doesn't have like the snotty edge in the vocals. You know what I mean? Like on points, it doesn't sound like the Stooges at all. But like, I listen to this and I can't not think of the Stooges for fucking five minutes, I swear to God. So anyway, I love this shit. I mean, I did inspire me to pull this out the other day. I mean, <laughs> go ahead and show this off. God, I bought this a long time ago. I bought this actually at a coffee shop when I was still living in Cleveland. So, 92, 93, 94, somewhere in there. I was in some uh, coffee shop on the east side and there was like a box of records underneath one of the chairs in there during some poetry slam or something. I remember the poetry was all kind of, you know, you'd expect it a poetry slam in Cleveland. But, um, the guy had a few records and, uh, this was in there. At this point, I mean, I had this on CD. I didn't think I was ever going to see this shit on record. And that just blew my fucking mind, too, right? Like, that's what dates the record more than anything else about it. Oh, the front looks pretty dated, too, right? Anyway, all-time classic, man. I mean, this is one of those records that really, uh... You know, was kind of an influence on me as far as my interest in music, as far as, uh... My ideas about sort of what the boundaries of music were, you know what I mean? I made a video about this like way back early on. Like I don't think I didn't make videos a year yet, but um, specifically about records that had been sort of like milestones in my development, like in my appreciation for music, like records that in one way or another just sort of like changed my idea of what music could possibly sound like, you know what I mean? What it was possible to do with music, and this was really one of those records. It was a relatively early one, you know, and I found this one about the same time as like the first suicide record and some shit like that yeah but that was really a milestone for me sort of like when I heard Machine Gun by uh, uh, Peter Brutzman for the first time yeah all right anyway I'll try real hard not to lose all my records this time so I got to do a little like uh, shout out to a Zonkman segment here too because if y'all been watching his channel is actually called Steve Bender the dude fakes you out that way but if, um, if you've been uh, watching uh, his, if you've been watching any of this shit for any length of time, you know, he's kind of the guru, he's like the guy when it comes to this whole stoner shit, the desert rock shit, right? And, um, you know, I tend to go in and like find something and start digging into it, but like, I don't necessarily have the baseline education. So, the Zonk Man, aside from being awesome, and like his channel is fun to watch and like he's just cool you know what I mean and like his videos will make you smile anyway so aside from all that shit like the kind of shit that you actually watch these videos for he just like reins me in and like points out these ones that I might have missed along the way down my rabbit hole you know what I mean and like these are some great examples these, these, this, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about because these names weren't really on my radar even though these are probably a lot less obscure than some of the other shit that I've been digging up you know like these guys, Greenleaf. He just showed this in a video not too too long ago. This record is great, man. It's I was expecting this to be more sort of um, I don't know. I guess straight up stoner. You know what I mean? But I was going to say it has more of sort of a rock thing going than I expected. I think I mean it, it's a little bit more. Um, I like the way they walk the line better on this record between good riffs and sort of a drone vibe more than I expected to out of this record. I think this record does that exactly right. And I was really impressed with it. You know what I mean? Because like, I like like an ohm or something like that, where it's all sort of about the droniness, you know, you know where you like to sleep. And I don't like shit like, um, you know, like Electric Wizard, where it's a lot more like, you know, riffs and that sort of thing, or Fu Manchu even, you know, something like that, right? These guys walk the line in a really cool way. And um, yeah, so shout out to put me onto that. Here's another one that was sort of in the cutout bin there for a while, but I was like, fuck it, man, I'll roll the dice. But he was like, this is a little more rock and roll. And it's true, but it still has the right kind of vibe, you know what I mean? It's still sort of within that spectrum, so, uh, you know, this isn't like an all-time classic or anything, but Dacher Row 4, however you say that, it's a good record, a good band. 
All right, so here's some shit. Okay, so here's another fucking band. I've been totally hung up on these guys, okay? This is a uh, Kaleth, and this is Colossus. And I've been playing this record like every day because first of all, fucking look at that. You know, like this is the kind of record that makes you want to pull it out. And then, you know, when it's already in your hands because you're looking at those awesome pictures, you might as well just fucking put it on too, right? So this one actually just came in the mail today, though. I got that one a couple weeks ago. And this is my first impression of this one. But there's a specific thing about this record that I thought was really cool. I'll show the cover in just a second. Oh, shit. All right, so I joke about fucking uh, how you're not a real collector until you drop the record. <laughs> and it's fucking true. You know what I mean? It's like the way I sling these things around all day. If you've never dropped a record, you just fucking started collecting last week. But, um, I don't do that very often. What I do do all the time is pull a fucking record out of the sleeve like I just did when it's in my hands. And then I sit there and I'm like, oh shit, I can't put it down on top now, so. And that's annoying. And you know, I'm not like a mid freak, but I'm not gonna like start stacking my records on top of each other like that and shit. You know, I'm not an idiot. So this cover is just as good as the one I just showed you. Well, almost. It's a little hard. Depends on you catch me. No, it's just as good. I only played this once. There's something specific I want to find, though. I want to find a specific riff spot. Oh, we'll get there. Anyway, man, these guys are Italian or something like that. Actually, I see or something like that. It says, I think they're from Milan. It says where they recorded it, though, and shit. It says where they are. And their names are like... Enrico Gastaldo is the uh, vocalist. Hey, and by the way, let me show you a little something. Since Michelle in English is usually spelled like with a, the French way with two L's, but occasionally you see it spelled with one L, there's just a little bit of tip, a little tip on it. That might come in handy someday. That right there is not that name. That's an Italian name, that's Michael. It's Michele. All right, so like if you see that name and it's an Italian last name and an Italian band, that's probably a dude. So um, I'm telling you this so you can like show proper respect like when you're meeting musicians, you're like, um, there's a, uh, I'm spacing his fucking name, there's a, there's a horror director in Italian from the early 80s, named Mich Michele Soavi, that's what I was trying to think of. Yeah, so if you're talking about him, you won't sound like an idiot either, but the other thing is on the fucking Tinder, Michelle with one L, you're playing the fire, dude. I mean, unless that's what you're going for, you know? Okay, so I didn't find the right spot. Yeah, it's just a really cool way. There's a, the, the, there was a really cool way of, like, propelling the riff forward in the song. But whatever, you know? So you're still getting an idea of the, the, sort of the space of this. But these guys deliver on the riffs, too, you know? And another thing is their singer is just right as far as the quality level. Like, this fucking record is another one I was just listening to before. Okay, so this one is definitely, like, on the prog end of the spectrum when it comes to this kind of shit, right? Nepal Death. I think there's another Swedish one. It's on that same label, right? But, um... But the singer on this one is almost too good, you know what I mean? Like, this guy is solid, right? But he's kind of rough, you know what I mean? He's got a little gravel in there. He doesn't sound trained at all. This guy is actually, like, a really good singer who could front the band, like... You know, I, I gotta find that fucking song, man. This is what happens when I try and rave about a record I've only played once. The whole thing goes to shit. Yeah, I really think I was on side two. It's an interesting example of like how to put the tunes together. That's why I think it's interesting. So sometimes these things scratch really specific itches. This one, man, when it comes to that like deep purple organ sound, even though this is a recent record, 2007, so actually kind of old for the shit I've been listening to lately. But this one right here by uh, Vilgot Sjurman, I guess. Yeah, Vilgot. 
it's like heavy it has some sonar vibes like it's it, it would be on the proggy end of the spectrum but uh, it's just so like loaded with like this heavy organ that it just makes you I mean I can't sit, help but sit there and smile through the whole fucking thing you know? This one, uh, these guys seem to be like one of the bigger names. Like I've noticed some of the listings and shit. It'll be like, yeah, it has members of Agusa. I don't know if that's gonna focus at all, but A G U S A. There you go. These guys are definitely. I mean, these guys are pretty much prog rock. They have some of those elements and shit, and it's very heavy on the flute. So if you don't like flute, stay the fuck away from Agusa. I definitely think the flute sort of. This might not be any more proggy than Nepal Death, really, but the flute kind of makes it feel more that way. It gives a little bit more of that sort of Jethro Tull, uh, you know, brings that shit to mind, right? Although the playing isn't even necessarily as aggressive as Ian Ashton's play, you know what I mean? Sort of percussive noises and shit that he does. Now you see, you hear in some of the German bands, there's less of that on here. Or at least it didn't jump out at me much. Anyway, it's a cool record too, but um, it's not. Wouldn't be one of the first ones I recommend for this. You know, if you want to start checking out these these K2 records, like I have been sort of kind of obsessively. Yeah. So this one, man, this one just has. I mean, just this one just looks right. They're called Alucarda, right? <laughs> right off there, we're off to a good start, right? And then there's your back. I love like any record cover where it has like a really stark image on each side like that. But you know something? I'm not crazy about this record and you know why? Because the singer just sounds too much like a punk singer for me. And um... I guess in a way it makes me feel like I've heard it before. Even though I haven't, like I don't know these songs that well, you know? Fuck it, I'll cycle it through, what the hell. Caleb is awesome, though, and one of these days I'll find that thing and talk about it. I'm not going to, like, spend the whole time, trying, whole video trying to find one thing. So I just lost the inner again there, but uh, I'd make a complete ass out of myself. Some special red vinyl. Actually, you know what's funny about this? It says ox blood, I think. Yeah, it's ox blood red. I remember when that um, that first uh, vinyl pressing of uh, Into the Pit by Ultimatum came out. Like there was a more recent one that um, you know had like a regular jacket and that, but the first for earlier one that had like a fold over, and the vinyl was supposed to be like ox blood red too, but it was kind of pink, and Scott was really bummed about it. <laughs> I mean, he didn't like throw a fit because Scott's such a Scott Waters, whose channel I hope you're subscribed to. Yeah, Scott's such a gentleman, of course, he wasn't going to like throw a tantrum about it or anything. But yeah, he was pretty disappointed about that. So every time I pull this one out, which is not like the color of vinyl, I would like place at the top of my list for colored vinyl choices, right? But every time I think of it, I was like, yeah, Scott really kind of got screwed. That's so fat. That sound, that distortion's awesome. The drums sound really cavernous. I like that. So it's really set up to be like good, like one of the more, more sort of, you know. The distortion is almost beyond metal a little bit, but sort of in that metal ballpark with this shit. You know what I mean? None of this is really metal to me. Conclave is probably about as close as it gets. Not that I call this punk either, mind you. I'm an idiot. <laughs> That's what I'm sort of rechristening. <coughs> Excuse me, I just made myself cough on this fucking thing. That's bad. So I'm sort of rechristening my punk section as the rock pop section. That's sort of where everything else is when you take out all the jazz and the metal and like all the actual punk. I actually kind of sold off a long time ago. So it's all just shit like the residents over there. So it's gonna, it's it's coming to be dominated by this kind of shit. And I am just fine with that. And then, like, in the middle, there are, like, some Muslim gauze records or something that don't really belong there, but I don't have any better place for them. They're not going to the bologna sack, that's for sure. It's funny, it's instrumental for all this time when I was saying, yeah, this is so good except for the singer. I don't know, maybe you can share my disappointment then, you know? 
I'm exaggerating. This is a really cool record, man. I mean, that is a good sound. Let me check where these guys were from, actually. The name Alucarda, I just sort of assumed they were Italian, but just because the movie was doesn't really mean anything, does it? Looks like they're, looks like they're Danish. Two of them have Danish names, but the third one of them is Ferreira. There you go. Oh, right, well, it's about 20 minutes. Did I cover all the records I'm even cover? Hey, a few of you have, uh, like, sort of, like, given, like, little tips and shit in the comments. And I really appreciate that. I mean, with this kind of shit, more than a lot of things, because, uh, you're so, there's so much. Like, someone mentioned, uh, I guess, Ufo Mamut in the, co in the uh, comments recently. I kind of inspired me to seek out this first one. It's funny, because I, I hadn't listened to them in kind of a while, not, I mean, a couple months, not, like, a long time, but, uh. This one feels the most like sort of rocky to me out of the albums of theirs that I have. And I only have like maybe three or four or something, but the other ones felt more sort of, um, I don't want to say like chaotic or anything like that, because they're thoughtful, but if I say thoughtful, that makes it sound like meditative, and I don't want to say that. They're definitely sort of, you know, like Lucifer songs is not like meditative music, you know what I mean? But, um, but anyway, but this one's sort of more... It also has that kind of a vibe to it, but with a more sort of a hard rock idiom, and I'm really digging it a lot. So, uh, you know, by all means, man. If there's shit I need to be checking out or favorite bands, that's cool. The worst that can happen is I don't take your advice, right? But a lot of times I will. And I definitely don't mind just checking something out on the strength of a recommendation, you know? I guess at this point I made a couple videos about my sort of thought process. I go through it and buy records. So uh, I suppose that's all there. But yeah, no like real egregious uh, shit here to overlook. I mean, there's other cool shit. Like I really, I've been, actually I haven't been as into this band as I was kind of hoping to be the first band from outer space. I guess these guys are said by the label, right? As sort of like, you know, these sort of progenitors of a lot of these space rock bands from Sweden that I've been so into lately. And that may be true that, like, the guys are all came from this band or something like that, but I just like the newer bands better than this, you know? This one kind of feels like it's finding its way in that a little bit still. And I have no idea, like, how mature the genre was at this point in time or, like, how well-established they were in that. But the whole thing just feels a little bit more sort of hesitant than the other albums. It's still really good, man. I mean, this, this, this has a bonus LP. And in spite of my general hostility to bonus material... This one is totally worth it, man. I really enjoy this whole thing. So. Also, it's not like a 30-year-old. It's not like a record that came out in 1968. And now someone's trying to get me to buy a triple LP either. If they, uh... If they... The first press only is just one record, and they add some another LP of other shit, like genuinely different shit for a second pressing, I'm in. <laughs> well, maybe not. Either way, though. I'm not going to sit here and get mad about it either. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm trying to say I was more or less full of shit in this video than usual. I'll leave that to you, dear viewer. <laughs> Until next time.